Ya Ibn Adam, I came and I asked you for food. I came and I asked you for drink and you denied me and the son and daughter of Adam will say, Anta Rabbul Alameen, you are the Lord of the worlds, O oh Allah, how can I deny you? And he would say, my slave came to you asking. And if you would have given to them, you would have found the reward there with them. I commence praising, glorifying and exalting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only one worthy of all worship, all praise, all glorification. I send salutations of prayers and peace upon the finality of prophets and messengers, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his family, his companions, and all who follow him in righteousness until the day of judgment. Indeed, beloved brothers and sisters, the best speech is the book of Allah, Jalla wa ala the Quran which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed as huda, as guidance, as nur, as light, as rahmah, as a mercy, as a shifa, as a healing for what lies within the hearts and souls of mankind. And the best of that guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was rahmatan lil alameen, who was a complete mercy for everything that exists. Beloved brothers and sisters, with the month of Ramadan coming in, as we know, Shahul Ramadan, الذي أنزل فيه القرآن, that it was the month in which Allah Tabaraka wa Taala has revealed the Quran. It is the month, inshaAllah Taala, that we have been long awaiting and expecting. It is the month, inshaAllah Taala, that we wish to enter and exit different than how we entered that month. So today, inshaAllah Taala. The goal, the ghaya, insha'Allah, is that I share a portion or several portions from the life of Zainul Abideen, the great grandson of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in hopes that we can take some of these portions of his life to use as motivation for things that we do in our own life. When it came to Zainul Abideen, he was known by the nickname of a sajjad he was known as the one who was constantly in prostration due to his love of being in that position of prostration. And we know that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, the closest you are to Allah is when you are in prostration, in sujood. And that is the time when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encouraged us to make a lot of dua. He was also an individual who dua was a keen part of his life. He was known for this special characteristic of always supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they said that he used to like making dua next to the Kaaba. And they have a dua that he made that was recorded by, by him, that in this dua he says, Rabbi laqad adhaqatani min rahmatika ma adhaqatani wa awlayta min in'amika ma awlaytani فَسِرُتُ أَدْعُوكَ آمِنًا مِنْ غَيْرِ وَجْلٍ وَأَسْأَلُكَ مُسْتَأْنِيسًا مِنْ غَيْرِ خَوْفٍ رَبِّ إِنِّي أَتَوَسُّلَ مَنْ اشْتَدَتْ فَاقَاتُهُ إِلَى رَحْمَتِكَ وَدَعُفَتْ قُوَّتُهُ عَنْ أَدَاءِ حُقُوقِكَ He says, فَاقْبَلْ مِنِّي دُعَاءَ الْغَرِيقِ الْغَرِيبِ الَّذِي لَا يَجِدُ لِإِنْقَاذِهِ إِلَّا in this beautiful dua that he made to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Lord, you have granted me your mercy as you wilt. And there is no individual in this masjid right now, in this moment, that has not been a recipient of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can all think of moments when Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has blessed us with his mercy constantly and consistently through our lives. And he says in this dua, and you have blessed me with your bounties as you will. And all of us, mashallah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, this morning, we woke up and we ate. Walhamdulillah, we had a roof over our head. Some of us drove here to the masjid in a car. We'll go home and we'll eat lunch and dinner and the likes. And the bounties continue to be bestowed upon us as well. He says, and because of this, I have come and I have invoked you without any shyness and to ask you in a familiar way without any fear. And he says, O oh Lord, Allah, 
I beg of you, as one who is in deep need of mercy, and the reality is that all of us here today are in deep need of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, and I ask you as one who doesn't have enough strength to perform his duties as you have commanded. And we know that we are from those individuals, we are human beings, we are insan that are always falling short of the mark. That we also don't have the strength that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala that is needed for Allah tabarak wa ta'ala to carry out the commands that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala has commanded. And he ends this beautiful dua saying, accept my duas as if I were a drowning person who is alone and has no one else to accept his duas except you, Ya Allah, because you are the most generous. And the reality, beloved brothers and sisters, is that many of us may feel as if we are in an ocean at the moment, all alone in the water, in the depths of the water, drowning, and we know that there is no one other than Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala that can save us in those very moments. And the month of Ramadan is that month, insha'Allah Ta'ala, where we want to turn to Allah without any shyness, without any fear, begging Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as one who is drowning in the ocean, knowing that Allah Tabaraka Wa Ta'ala, He is the one who answers the dua. As Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, إِذَا سَعَلَكَ عِبَادِ أَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٍ أُجِيبُ الدَّعْوَةِ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ He says, if my servants are to ask you about me, then let them know that I am near and I respond to the supplication of the supplicant when they call upon me. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He teaches us that we should be from those who prep, who beg and ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as we are in need of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. During the life of Zainul Abideen, there was a man by the name of Tawaf, Ta Tawus ibn Qaysan. And he said that once he was watching Zainul Abideen as he was standing by the Kaaba. And that Zainul Abideen, he was praying and making dua. And he said he had tears running down his eyes or his face profusely. That he was standing as if he had no strength and no energy. That he was standing there as someone who had a deep need and he was concerned. And he said, I stood around to wait until he finished. And when he finished, he said, I approached Zainul Abideen. He says, and I said to him, O child of the Prophet, you have three characteristics and traits that I hope will keep you from having this type of fear. And Zainul Abideen, he asked him, what are those traits and those characteristics? He said, the first, you are a descendant of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You are the family of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That should make you feel comfortable. He said, the second, your great grandfather will intercede on behalf of you, Ya Zainul Abideen. He said, the third is what Allah tells us in the Quran his, about his mercy. MashaAllah, that his mercy is wasi'. It is expansive. It touches all things. And Zainul Abideen, he wrote, he gave him a response that should be written in gold, inscribed into our hearts for us to never forget. He said to Tawus ibn Qaysan, he says, in terms of my relationship to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and him being my grandfather, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, he says in Surah Al Mu'minun, verse 110. فَإِذَا نُفِخَ فِي السُّورِ فَلَا أَنْسَابَ بَيْنَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ وَلَا يَتَسَاءَلُونَ He said when the trumpet will be blown on that great day, the day of judgment, he said there will be no kinship between them on that day, nor will they ask one another about each other. As we know that the Prophet ﷺ, he also taught us that on the day of judgment, the mother, the one who loves her child like none other, <coughs> that on that day, she will say, nafsi, nafsi al -yawm. Today, I can't help you. Today, you have your own problems. I have my own problems. This day, you are all alone. He says, on this day, Allah wa ta'ala says, 
kinship is not going to help one another, nor are they going to ask about each other. So how can I depend that I am the grandchild of the Prophet ﷺ? He said in terms of number two, in terms of my great grandfather interceding on my behalf, he says in Surah Al-Anbiya, verse 28, he says in this beautiful verse that Allah, He fully knows what is ahead of them and He knows what is behind them and they do not intercede except for whom Allah Jalla wa ala wa ala. So here, subhanAllah, He is not declaring Himself to be from those who may be able to avail of the intercession of the Prophet Sallallahu He says regarding the third point that you mentioned, the mercy of Allah Jalla wa Ala, then Allah says in Surah Al-A'raf, verse 56, إِنَّ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ مِنَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ He says, indeed the mercy of Allah is close to the good doers. So we see here that Zayn al-Abideen as well, he did not consider himself to be from those individuals. He did not consider himself because of lineage, because of status, because of who he was, who he was brought up by, who my father is, who my great grandfather is, who I think I am. To think that on the day of judgment, he was going to have it easy and he had nothing to worry about. This is why he cried profusely because this is how the believers were that they turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not knowing this was the case of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. This is why when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was on his deathbed, the Aisha radiallahu anha after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa saying, command Abu Bakr to lead the salah. And she says, Ya Rasulullah, but he cries too much in the prayer, we can't understand him, we can't hear him. This is the effect that this life that the Qur'an had upon the believers. That Abu Bakr used to say, I wish I was the grass the cattle would eat. I wish I was something forgotten. Because they understood that it is only due to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will enter paradise and not because of who we are, where we come from, nationality, color, language, looks, None of that will matter on the Day of Judgment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa says, يَنْظُرُوا إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَأَعْمَالِكُمْ That Allah will look at their hearts, right? As nothing enters paradise, إِلَّا قَلْبٌ سليم, Except a pure heart. And that Allah will look at their actions. And in another part of the story of his life, it is with his cousin. His cousin, his name was Al-Hassan. And he says that Al-Hassan said, I was upset with Ali Zainul Abideen. He says, and I went and I found him in the masjid. He says, and I told him some words that Allahu Akbar. And after I said what I said to him, I turned around and I left. He says, Later on that afternoon, I got a knock at my door. And when I opened up the door, who else was it but my cousin Zainul Abideen? And I said, he has come to basically let me have it, to give me a taste of what I gave to him. And he says that Zainul Abideen, he looked at him and he says, my cousin, if what you said to me in the masjid from those words, if I am at fault, he says, then may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me. He says, and if what you said about me in the masjid is false, he said, then may Allah jalla wa ala forgive you. And he turned around and he began to walk away. And Al-Hassan said he chased behind him and then he said i swear i'll never do anything like this again to ever harm you and that zain al abideen he turned towards his cousin and he says you have no worries 
For on the day of judgment, I am not going to hold it against you. Subhanallah, learning the arts of forgiveness, right? As human beings, we have lost this art that when we become angry with one another, we become enraged with one another. Khalas, yawmul qiyamah, we're going to see each other. Yawmul qiyamah, I'm going to get my right from you. You wait, you watch, you see, brother. Zainul Abideen teaching us what a true believer is all about. If you can only imagine Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu with the ifq of Aisha radiallahu anha, his daughter, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu the greatest slander that could have ever occurred. And then Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu taking care of the one who's the slanderer, Mistah, his cousin. And he says, I swear by Allah, I'll never give him another cent. And Allah says and reveals, let not the affluent among you say that they're not going to take care of those in need. Forgive. For would you not love for Allah to forgive you? And Abu Bakr in that moment, he says, I swear by Allah, I will never ever stop giving to Mistah ever. Showing subhanAllah the art of forgiveness. Remember the man who walked into the masjid and the Prophet said, you have Jannah, he has Jannah. And the man, he goes, one of the other companions, he goes, he knocks on his door. I have some issues. Can I stay with you? He stays, he's watching him. He's curious. I want paradise as well. I want to see what he does. He comes and he comes out and he tells him the truth. <laughs> there was nothing wrong. But you walked in, the Prophet said, you're a person of paradise. And I wanted to see what it is that you do. So I came to watch and forgive me, but I don't see that you do anything better than what I do or anything extra than what I do. And the man said, the only thing I can think of is that when I go to sleep at night, I don't hold any rancor, any hate, any malice in my heart towards my brothers. A characteristic, a trait of the people of paradise. This Ramadan, use this. Ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala if you've had a hard heart, ask Allah to soften it for you, to make it easy for you to let go of the hate, the anger, the pain, to forgive. Because Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, if you can only imagine how many times we transgress against Allah, and imagine if Allah, when we transgress against Him, He says, Khalas, you're done. Khalas, I don't want anything else to do with you. But rather Allah says, if the person repents, they mend their ways and mashallah, and they turn to Allah, they're going to find Allah off forgiving, merciful. Allahu Akbar. These are lessons for us, beloved brothers and sisters. Forgive your brothers and sisters during the month of Ramadan, for it is a higher level. It is mashallah from the mu'mineen, the muhsineen, the higher level of Islam, inshallah ta'ala. There was another moment in his life with his slave. His slave is recounting the story, telling the story, and he says, Zainul Abideen sent me to do some things. And I delayed myself in the process. He says, and when I came back, Zain hit me with the whip. He said, I got so upset that I said to him, Zainul Abideen, fear Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. You send me to go do a task and then you hit me because of it. Have fear of Allah. He says, Zainul Abideen, in that moment, he looked at his slave and he told his slave, he said, go to the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and make two raka'ah. And in those two raka'ah, ask Allah Jalla wa Ala to forgive Zainul Abideen. And after that, you are liberated and you are free. SubhanAllah. He's teaching us as well that if we are the ones who offend another person, if we are the ones who harm someone else, hurt someone else, cause pain in the life of someone else, then the higher level of that believer is for you to ask for forgiveness, to ask them to ask Allah to forgive you, especially during this month of Ramadan, which is encroaching upon us. Beloved brothers and sisters, in the final, narration regarding his life. They said that Zainul Abideen, he was a wealthy man. 
and that one of the things he loved to do with his wealth was to give in charity. But that the charity that he used to give, he used to give it secretly. They say at night he would fill up bags of flour and that he would go to over a hundred people in the city of Al Madina, putting the flour upon his own backs and delivering it house to house without them knowing who was the person delivering the flour. And he used to take it to those who had the most need. And they said that no one knew who was giving away this flower until Zainul Abidin had passed away. Subhanallah. And the sadaqah stopped. And when they were washing his body, the men who were washing his body, they saw upon his shoulders and his, black, and his back two black marks. And they asked, what is this? And they said it was from the sacks of flour that he used to carry on his back, going throughout the city, inshaAllah ta'ala, to take care of the poor and the needy. And we know that during this month of Ramadan, that we are abstaining from our food and drink, abstaining also from immorality and everything connected to it. And that in this, it should make us people who are empathetic, it should make us people who think about those who are not in who those who are in need and that we begin to give to those who are in need that we service them because way too often we don't realize our prejudices when it comes to the poor and the needy we don't realize our racism when it comes to the poor and the needy but those things come up i don't know i've never been in this area i'm from new jersey in new york but sometimes we'll stop at a stoplight and we'll have a homeless man who will come and he's holding up a sign and it says, I'm homeless, help me. And in most cases in that situation, people do one or two things. They're either tender hearted and they help, but in most cases, 70 to 80% people do like this and they look straight as if it is going to be contagious for you to look at the person who is in need and they don't, or they raise the window up and then they begin to be racist and everything else that happens. This person, drug addict. This person, criminal. This person, has, he deserves or she deserves to be in the street. Why should I help them? But I ask you the question, did you receive revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that told you that that individual was homeless because of drugs, because of crime, or maybe they're homeless because of mental health, or maybe they're homeless because they lost their job, or maybe they're homeless because they were immigrants who came into this country and they got thrown into the street and now they have nowhere to go, them and their families. And Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He's provided this as an opportunity for you. Because He says that on the day of judgment in the Hadith Qudsi, that He's going to say, Ya Ibn Adam, I came and I asked you for food. I came and I asked you for drink and you denied me and the son and daughter of Adam will say, Anta Rabbul Alameen, you are the Lord of the worlds, oh Allah, how can I deny you? And he would say, my slave came to you asking. And if you would have given to them, you would have found the reward there with them. SubhanAllah. Showing that we need to be people who give, people of charity, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was known to be Jawad in the month of Ramadan more than in any other month. Generous like a wind, spending and giving, especially to those in need. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum, fa astaghfiruhu fa innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim. Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tamasaka bi sunnatihi ila yawm al-deen amma ba'd. Beloved brothers and sisters, I'm going to leave you off with a verse that is found in the Qur'an where Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, he states so beautifully, Alayhi allahu bi kafin abda. Is Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala not sufficient enough for his slave? And in this month of Ramadan, I really want you to analyze this verse in your life. Is Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala not sufficient for you, for you to turn away from your sin, 
for you to, mashallah, engage with your salat the way you're supposed to, for you to engage in the good, for you to, mashallah, say, Ya Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, I'm ready to change my life, Ya Allah, I haven't been living right, I haven't been living the way you have ordered, I haven't been living the way you have commanded, I haven't submitted and obeyed the way I need to submit and obey, I've been struggling, Ya Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, but you are sufficient for me, Ya Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, and I'm going to surrender myself to you, Ya Allah, because I know that when I have you, Ya Allah, I have everything, even if I have nothing. I may not have wealth, I may not have a home, I may not have health, but if I have you, Ya Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala in my life, and I make you sufficient for me, then I have everything. And without you, Ya Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, I have nothing. So in this Ramadan, beloved brothers and sisters, make sure that Allah is sufficient for you. Make sure that he is sufficient to the point that you are going to transform and change your life once and for all. This is the purpose and goal for Ramadan, insha'Allah ta'ala. It is the self barometer, insha'Allah, so that you can see where you are with your relationship of deen, Quran, sunnah, your Lord, Allah Jalla wa ala, and so that you can begin to change and transform that, take advantage, before you come upon the day when it will be too late and those individuals on that day will say, Ya li tani, O woe to me. May Allah protect us from being among them. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Rabbana la tuzik qulubana ba'da thadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al-wahab. رب من لنا عندك بيتا في الجنة رب من لنا عندك بيتا في الجنة فأنت الرحمن الرحيم We ask you Allah allow us to reach the month of Ramadan We ask you Allah allow us to reach the month of Ramadan Allow us ya Allah that in Ramadan our Iman increases and remains to be that way that Ya Allah, in Ramadan, we begin to change our lives. That Ya Allah, in Ramadan, the Salat becomes sweeter in our lives. That Ya Allah, in Ramadan, the Siyam becomes sweeter in our lives. That Ya Allah, in Ramadan, our focus, our mission, our goal is You, Ya Allah, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Your pleasure, Your love, Your mercy, Your forgiveness, Your pardoning, and that You will grant us all of that in this beautiful month of Ramadan, Ya Allah, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And we ask You, Ya Allah, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, to liberate and free our brothers in Palestine and sisters in Palestine. We ask you, Allah, remove the foot of the oppressor off of their necks, Ya Allah, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. We ask you, Allah, allow them to have some peace during the month of Ramadan, Ya Allah. We ask you, Allah, send them malaika, send them angels the way you sent to Badr, Ya Allah. We ask you, Allah, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, to answer our du'as and to not reject them because of our sins. Ameen, fa'aqimu salah.